it seems like everyone's here, so we could get started. So we'll call the meeting to order. Um, so I'll be leading the meeting tonight as a little work session for us to get started in the city plan. Uh, this is to give Leslie a little bit of a break. Um, the first thing that we'll do is approve the agenda. Does anyone have anything to add or change about the agenda? Okay, we'll deem it approved. Uh, and then next we have comments from the chair. I don't have anything to, to add at all. Um, there were some emails going around the last two weeks from the city. Is there anything notable? Um, I think maybe, Mike, if you can just go over the RFP, because there were some comments about that. Uh, so you can bring everyone up to speed on that, because I don't think we've discussed that. Yeah, so the city, um, so we got a municipal planning grant last fall to do a, basically a master plan for State Street. And then throughout the winter, there was some additional projects in the downtown. And so there was a desire to expand that to be the entire, basically the downtown core to do a downtown master plan, which I think a we lot of us talk about have that. talked about. No, but we did as a group. Mm -hmm. It's just been a little bit of a while, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. we need our memories refreshed. So that RFP went out um, over, well, two weeks ago, oh. so. Since you don't work in state government, <laughs> you might not know what RFP stands for. It means request for proposal. It's when we ask for people to submit applications, um, we call them bids, uh, to hire them to do the work. So when we say we put out an RFP, it's that we're requesting that we receive bids from various consultants to um, basically do this work for us, which would, would be making a plan for State Street. Yeah, and now it'll be State Street, including um, Barry and Main, Barry out to Hubbard, Main out to, I think, School, and so they have a little bit of Langdon, a little bit of School, a little bit of Elm, but primarily just that downtown core. And the idea is to do streetscapes because it really isn't going to change a lot. The streetscape that's identified for State Street is probably going to be replicated for that, those same concepts because you want to have a consistent theme. So it's probably not a big stretch to, to continue that. Um, but it's also going to do a land use analysis and do a little bit because um, it really came out of a discussion of the Confluence Park, which was discussed for... Um, Taylor Street. So the Taylor Street project, they're going to put at the confluence of the North Branch and Winooski, they're going to put in a park. And then they wanted to do one on the other side where the pedestrian bridge comes over. We purchased three parcels over here. So the city now owns these parcels. We're going to put the bike path in. We're going to put the bridge in. And we've got one lot that's available for economic development re redevelopment and then we had another parcel that was going to be a parking lot and the question came up what should we do should we keep with that plan of a parking lot and economic development or should we make the parking lot smaller should we remove the parking lot altogether and have a bigger park do we still want to use the economic development lot for economic development or do we want that to be some kind of pocket park or something so that that was kind of the the questions that came up. So what we wanted to be able to do was to have the consultant that's doing these downtown um, streetscapes to also take a look at our public assets that we have, the, the Jacobs parking lot, these three lots, the Heaney parking lot. Um, you know, we have some parking lots behind City Hall. And just to kind of take a look at what our needs are based on what our land uses are. So do a little bit of a land use analysis and look at you know, should we use this for parking? You know, if we take out, for, for example, if we take out the parking on Berry Street, which has been a long time proposal because we need to connect our bike path. If we take that parking out, we might need to have that a parking lot to make up for those losses, those mm -hmm. parking spaces. We just have to have a conversation where we start to balance things, not looking just isolated at one parcel. We really have to look at the downtown and go and say, what are our downtown needs? We know we don't have a lot of green space, and we should do more to have more green space, but we also have to balance these other needs of if we want bike lanes, we might lose parking. Um, how do we balance all of our needs to kind of satisfy everybody's 
goals um, with a very limited number of resources. So that's the, the third piece. So there'll be the State Street streetscape, the Main Street, Berry Street streetscape as part two, and then the third part is this land use analysis to help guide and inform the Planning Commission and City Council on what should we do about what we call 12 Main Street. Can so you repeat Moet. that recap again? <laughs> so we're going to be looking at the State Street? Streetscape. Okay, State Street streetscape. Because that's the one that so we already have a grant test. for, so we have to fulfill those grant right. obligations. Okay. Then we will do um, the streetscapes for the rest of the downtown core, so that's you know Main Street and Barry, and a few other smaller streets. And I remember us discussing that because it made sense to, you know, while we we're already doing that, to kind of look at it more as a, a unit. Mm -hmm. So Barry Street others and that's also a street 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 scape yeah. that is a hard word okay and then the third piece was is looking at the land use okay. analysis and these other public parcels and the state street streetscape is <laughs> triggered by the work on the bridge Sorry. yeah and that okay. was triggered by the fact that we have to replace that bridge okay. in three or four years so the hope is if we've got a good conceptual plan then we might be able to talk about do we want to realign the curves um, to make wider sidewalks the sidewalks are quite narrow on parts of state street it would be nice to have wider sidewalks but if we're going to make wider sidewalks something else has to go on street parking maybe a turn lane you know we really have to start to look at you know how could we make those wider other people may argue we want to have bike lanes. Well, if we want to have bike lanes, same question. Where, where would we, who, what do we give up to have bike lanes? And does it make sense to give those up? And if we gave up parking, where would we replace that parking? So when do you think that, like, what's the timeline going to be as far as us having a product to look at? Uh, well, the, April 12th is when it's, is when the, I think it's April 12th is when the RFP the proposals are due. Proposals yeah. are due. Um, they would then have about a year to complete the project, but I think they're going to be touching base. Um, our discussions that we had before with um, the net zero winners, the Team Bridges and the other proposals, I think are going to factor in a lot more. So I think if we're going to invite Team Bridges, I would wait till after we have a consultant on board so we can have them here that presentation as well because I think as they're working on this we really should be integrating if we're going to integrate it that's where we would integrate those ideas is into that downtown master plan there may be pieces that are outside you know team bridges talked about remote parking and using a, the railroad as a as a shuttle to get people in and out of downtown that may happen outside but what happens in the downtown core we should really have reflected in that downtown master plan so do you anticipate getting proposals from entities like the team bridges i mean i know they're kind of a group yeah we've i've heard i've received interest from uh at least three separate consulting firms right now um, at a certain point sometimes they start coming together mm -hmm. sometimes two of them will come in one will be a landscape architect and another one will be a you know more in the traffic side and they might come together to put in a single proposal so i'm not sure where they'll if they'll start mixing together at a certain point, but right now I know we have at least three interested consultants. Okay, sounds great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the update. Um, any more comments? I'll throw out one other quick one um, just to go and say that on Wednesday we will be having the first, maybe the only potentially zoning for the interim zoning and we put that together and we forwarded that the interim zoning for consideration and so uh, council will be taking that up on Wednesday so they may hear it and vote that day they may hear it make some changes and want to have another hearing wait, wait, can you back up a little bit because I know we're having a public hearing on some on changes but all right so what are they going to be hearing they're hearing the interim changes which were just the steep slopes 
not buildable area, just steep slopes, 30 percent. Um, uh, the landscape and the landscape rules. Mm -hmm. um, right. So, we felt like those were a priority. We wanted to get them moved. Yeah, faster. because they will um, impact projects that are being applied for for the spring construction season. Mm -hmm. And because it takes a long time for us, you know, our hearing's not till April on the permanent changes. Then it will be time before it goes to council, and then council will have to have hearings, and so those probably won't be ready till the end of June before they're actually adopted. By then, we've kind of missed a chunk. So hopefully, this gets the important fixes through, so we can get some good projects moving. Do you think you'll need one of us on hand to explain anything? Wouldn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, I will be there, and they have been, the council has been briefed on it already, so. What time um, is the meeting? It's good. This one will be starting at 7. Um, so the public hearing is scheduled for 7.15. Uh, so it was initially warned for 6.45. Then council had a meeting set up, uh, an executive session that's going to go 6 to 7, so they had to push the zoning hearing to 7.15. Right at bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the worst time. <laughs> um, I could feasibly make it. And anyone else who wants to? But we'll remember that. <laughs> Actually, have a birthday party to go to after that. So. Oh right. Yeah. It's fine. Um, okay, so I'll plan unless some, unless we hear through email that someone else wants to attend and represent us, which is open. <laughs> uh, any other business? Okay, so uh, that moves us number four on the agenda, general business comments from the public, and there's no one here, so I think we can move past that to our work on the city plan, which is where things become kind of unstructured, I guess. We have, we have tracing paper and we have loads of ideas. Um, anybody have an idea about where to start? Sorry, I got a text message and I'm a little. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got a text message. Is it a text from the future author? Future generation? Uh, no, it's future call. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone is one. Oh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take notes of everything, and I'll type those up and email them around, and I guess potentially put them on, I could put them on the website. Yeah, so uh, we we could you wanna potentially project this. Although, do, do we have an HTML table? That uh, sounds like a fancy word not, for dongle. You can actually just <laughs> go on the website. Do you, so that's not gonna work. <laughs> 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 Need some sort of conversion. One of those. I can go get one of those if you want. Are these maps the same except this one's a bit more zoomed in? Yeah, this one is supposed to be town wide as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, captures most of it. Mm -hmm. This one is zoomed into the downtown. Just because it's a little bit busy. where the action's at. I'll get the. Thank you for asking that because <laughs> I was trying to yeah. figure it out. I think they were the same. I look at that one. Like, I, was where, like, where, I feel like I should know where this. Is, where is that? <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's so a trick question. So That's this, actually very so over this there. Is, <laughs> this is Montpelier Planning Commission. <laughs> this is, is Montpelier <laughs> with Mercury's and Retrograde. Yeah. Right. yeah so. <laughs> so I put two the two maps up on our plan website. One is one that I made like in August 2017 and probably could be updated, but I um, haven't had time to do that or um, I guess if people have ideas on what could be on it, I could do that instead of uh, going through and, and aimlessly adding or removing things. Um, and then the other one is just a, a map that um, everyone here has uh, access to that you can add 
uh, points to or lines or draw on and add to like a maintain, evolve, transform sort of funding commission workspace. Um, Do you want to just go over the transform, evolve, maintain language? Emery hasn't been here for that discussion and we could all use the recap. Yeah. Um, You're just our excuse to like remember <laughs> things we should know. <laughs> So, so backing up some, we have to come up with a, a, a city plan, um, and that has various components to it that we need to include. Um, one of those uh, should be a, a something that articulates vision. Of what are we? Why are we doing this? And a good way to do that is to try to document like what about our city uh, do we want to change or not change. Uh, so someone should be able to uh, either look at a, a map, and it's not only things that can be mapped, but um, looking at a map can be a helpful way to do it and understand, like, in Montpelier in 20, 30, 50 years, what's going to be different about it. And making sure that um, we all, all understand or that we're working towards a, a common vision um, is important. So going through an exercise where we start just putting it down on paper, even if we don't uh, all agree or that it's all uh, crystal clear, can just be a, a good way for us to identify things that everyone agrees with or things that maybe need uh, more work, and then we can uh, start to prioritize how to how how to get there and how that will happen. Um, so the idea of putting things into baskets around. Um, what do we want to maintain? So what, what do we like about Montpelier? And what do we may need to take actions to make sure that doesn't change? Or what do we want to completely transform? Uh, and then the third category is what do we want to evolve? So maybe it's not it's something in between the two. Um, so that's, that's generally the concept around the maintain, evolve, uh, transform, mapping, exercise. Uh, and it's a good way to, and, 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 and if we're going to collect information from other people, we can do away with those labels if we want. We can just ask, you know, what do you want to change about Montpelier, if you could change anything. And we have a tool now that um, Stone Environmental is working with Public Works that I think we should be able to use to gather um, input from uh, Montpelier's citizens um, as soon as... I don't know, be, if, if I can get the keys to it, uh, I could probably set something up, but uh, Stone should be able to take a lot of those map layers that um, we have and, and make them interactive. But in the meanwhile, I just created a simple Google map that we can all uh, edit and have access to. Um, and anyone can go to it, um, but unless they are, they've been included or given editor privileges, uh, they won't be able to or change things. So, so do we have, have a plug here? You got one of these guys? Uh, I doubt it. Not even one of those. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, Mike. Go that one? No. Uh, um, well, can you, can you log mine? into it? Uh, I think do we have the same thing. Will that fit in mine? Oh. Do we have... Oh, that'll work. Yeah. Uh, actually, you can old school technology there. Probably can't go too far. It's technically not my computer. It has your name on it. <laughs> yeah. It's all in there. Louis the Welts. Hit the lights. Yeah. If it's just you know, it's just the one that says council. Otherwise, we'll get the gardening club over here. <laughs> There's three different notes signifying. <laughs> <laughs> After repeated 
repeatedly uh, turning off other people's lights. So on our plan website, which at some point we probably need to figure out what's going on here, how we're using it, <laughs> but uh, I think I think it would help to set aside some time to kind of coordinate our efforts and how we're yeah how exactly we'll use it. Yeah. Um, if you go down to the bottom of the home page, I just put these links up here. Uh, I have the original of the painting right there in my home. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you'll see two links. One is for a map with layers for the plan, and another edit, maintain, evolve, transform map. So this was one that created back a while ago. Um, if you click the little sheets of paper that are stacked here, it'll open up some layers that you can toggle on and off. Um, you can see they include, you know, building footprints that are colored by use, um, our river corridors, flood hazard areas, parcels, sidewalks, wetlands, etc. Natural communities from the um, conservation committee. Um, probably like an old zoning district. Um, proposal that we should remove because this was before I think we adapted the zoning. <laughs> um, our sewer mains, water mains, uh, various paths, etc. So, so we made some of our uh, zoning district decisions based on where the sewer mains and water mains ended, just for people's history. And one of the things we'll, we'll eventually need to include in the plan is statute requires us to include a uh, land use map, a future land use map, um, transportation um, plan, a uh, utilities plan, and then another one that's more natural resource focused. So we'll have a lot of these components um, be separate maps included in the plan, but the, the maintain of all transform one is really to take all of those into consideration and, and come up with more of a um, vision statement if you want. So this this is this map is just essentially should serve as a reference point, and I can add or remove things um, as people want. We can even feed our uh, maintain of all transform points into this map if we want to have that as a layer to toggle on and off. Um, so when you say add, you don't mean just toggle that little check mark. You mean adding a whole other layer to that list. Like right, exactly. Yeah. So in the evolve uh, maintain of all transform, and I did this uh, several minutes before coming here, so I came up with examples that are possibly not appropriate or the best, but, uh, and I created, again, these three categories, transform, uh, well, maintain, and one for placeholder for questions or comments. Um, so if you were to, to log in, and I'm, I'm guessing we're logged in as Leslie because this opened in uh, <laughs> edit mode, uh, if it were someone not logged in or who doesn't have edit access it just you don't have the ability to edit it but with this you can essentially just add a point or a line if you wanted so let's say uh, we wanted to um, you know um, transform the historical society museum which I don't know why we would we probably don't want to do that at all but uh, listed as point three, so do away with history. Yeah, this is uh, good thing you're editing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> museum of the future. That's what we want. Do away with the museum. Oh my goodness. Uh, I got married, by the way, so <laughs> I hope, yeah. let's not do that. Uh, You'd be the last to get married there now. Um, and you can add a description. And if you save it, I'll go there. Maybe we decide to change that from a different category, move it there. Uh, and you can order them. They'll change the sequence of the numbers. If you zoom out, um, 
might be easier to see with a different uh, base map. take that and have it feed into the other map as a layer if we'd like. We can also export it or view it as a table. Um, we can add different uh, categories if we want, aside from just description, if we wanted to have it a priority ranking or whatever we wanted to do. But, um, I just do we want to put in some right now? Just try it out. Does anyone have any? So here I put in, you know, main, main street, Shaw, stone cutter, intersection, make oh, safer yeah. and pedestrian oriented <laughs> as yeah, a, a, a transform. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here evolve the pedestrian connection between National Life and downtown. Um, you know, maintain Trans maintain access. Transformational could be the uh, uh, revive rail line for commuter rail service. I mean, that's one that has been proposed by Team Bridges and a number of other people are looking into that. That would be a transformative project. It's not something that's here. We're not evolving and making it better. We're completely adding something new. Um, so we could do it as a line, but I'm not going to trace the entire railway. Um, you can get it close to you. That's good. It's supposed to be light rail, like, or something? Yeah, it was just, uh, well, there are two, two proposals. One that's going to the Team Bridges, and we've actually been doing, trying to do a study, getting some funding for a study, which would look at just the Washington County line. So it goes from Montpelier Junction to Barry City. And the idea is that could be just a light light rail commuter trolley type system. You know, we'd look at what cost effectiveness, whether it would work. Uh, that would allow for much better access. If you wanted to have commuter lots, if you wanted to move parking lots to the outside, that would work much better because you could, if you lived in Barry City, and worked in Montpelier, you could just go down to the Granite Museum and park, jump on the rail line. You'd probably be faster using a rail shuttle to Montpelier than you would actually driving your car in the traffic. Um, the other discussion that's been going on, which is more statewide, and we haven't been involved as much in, are folks who want to connect Montpelier to Burlington in Essex. Um, using the high-speed line on I-89. So that would be a much bigger, different project. Did you involved in that discussion with the state? It's, it's, I mean, um, Blittersdorf is a private individual who has interest in trying to see that happen. So he's kind of putting his own money and his, his own capital behind it to try to see if he could get that to work. He's bought Bud cars. Um, which are vehicles that would actually be able to make that journey, um, but there's a lot of cost involved in actually doing it. V-Trains did there. do a cost analysis, you know, something like we'd have to subsidize it to the tune of around 300 and some odd thousand dollars per rider. So per rider? You could just buy everyone a house instead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that, that idea is still being... Um, pushed and considered, so I'm sure it's one that would at least make it on our list of things for conversation, whether we decide to include it in our final plan, um, would probably come with a lot of input from the Transportation Committee and the public on whether that's something we want to pursue or if that's just an idea that, you know, we're going to get a lot of ideas Either that way, people I are I just going like to give us. The rail line right now, we can all agree, totally useless space, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know something should happen whether or not it's rail we probably don't know but that may just be an outcome of the plan that we 
have a study or yep. dedicated resources to figuring out how to effectively use that space. Mm -hmm. I, I think the same thing could apply to the waterfront there too, right? I mean, we don't maybe we don't know exactly how we like to transform it, but it seems like everyone in, in the city has an interest in wanting to see it be used better. Mm -hmm. Downtown generally, or the the waterfront strip along the rail line there, just mm -hmm. those all those parking lots. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off, Leslie. No, I think. I had a totally separate idea, so it's better to continue with this conversation. And then the add points, you can delete them by hitting the garbage can select. <laughs> so, um, what do you, do people want? Is this useful? Is yeah. It, oh, yeah. Is it like, that's nice, we're not going to use it? Is it, um, <laughs> give it a no. try, we can decide whether or not it's a good fit for us? Plug in some more ideas, because I mean, we can take this and just put it on our website as a layer. You know, just like initial thoughts, brainstorming session. Yeah. Um, so one I have, I don't think it's been, I don't know if it's been part of any of the proposals, but the base of National Life Drive, um, if you run down it, then you're kind of stuck running on a highway without a shoulder to get to the bike path. There needs to be some sort of connection pedestrian access, whether it's, you know, via Green Mountain Drive, whether there's a crossing to get to Green Mountain Drive to get to the bike path or another way, but... Yeah, it has been talked about. Yeah, I would yeah. imagine. Um, and the reason why it's difficult is because it's technically a limited access highway and you're not supposed to have sidewalks on a limited access highway. Uh -huh. so, so that's where... So what's the... I would say uh, add pedestrian access to connect National Life Drive and Green Mountain Drive. Green Mountain Drive, yeah. That's right. hmm. I think that's in our it's in our gap analysis that we did for the complete streets plan. Um, we that was identified. And there are a couple of options that have come up for how to fix that. One is to move Green Mountain Drive down to make National Life Drive and Green Mountain Drive a four-way. And therefore, you could put a, a light there. Green Mountain Drive doesn't have the problems anymore. And that would exit into that parking lot for um, Green Mountain Power. You just add pedestrian. What about U U32? Is there a need for some non-motorized connection through? Is that something? Is that something we'd want? And bike path. If you if you could bike or ski to U32 to the Art College of Fine Arts. I think a lot of these will be able to populate through those various plans that we have. The complete streets plan identifies a number of gaps that need to get fixed. Um, I think there's a the green print that I think came up the parks and those guys they have a plan that would talk about yeah just like that a line that would connect those um, on its way across I think I think the gap analysis talks about the sidewalk from U32 down to you know, we have a high school but we don't have sidewalk on Callison Hill, I don't believe. So you don't have walking. You can't walk there if you happen to be a student. Um, we really should have bike lanes and side, and at least a sidewalk on one side. Yeah. And I think cars drive pretty fast up there. Right? I 
it's a shortcut. It's tempting to because it's so wide. You can also add photos to all of these. I've seen deer though. I saw like a dozen deer in college last night. Crossing the street was amazing. Oh. Just one after the other. Yeah, just like a huge clump. <laughs> Do we get rid of the deer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eradication <laughs> plan for College Street area. That's a good idea. <clears throat> So the idea with this map is that we would all take individual time and think about it, because I'm like, this is just my beginning of thinking about it, and I'd like time to do it, but I wasn't quite sure what the vision was, or maybe that's what we're discussing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would think it would be great if you, over the next while, we think about it, even take photos with your phone, and you can add those uh, oh, cool. that'll like really bring it to life, I think, <laughs> when you see something, you're like, I would like that to change in Montpelier or I really like that and we should identify that as something we value. Are we, are we concerned about it becoming unwieldy when we start to have several dozen points up here or is that kind of the idea? That's, I think that's the idea and yeah. then when we have some of these meetings maybe we can go through and consolidate, clear some out or categorize or we can see how, see how it goes. not done this so yeah no yeah, and good, I think I think eventually stuff. we would be kind of breaking it into the different we'll eventually think be thinking about it on a chapter by chapter level I mean at this scale we're just getting ideas down to talk about but at a certain point we're, when we start talking about the historic resources chapter we're gonna have that discussion of the historic museum <laughs> and, and and we're gonna have that discussion about do we match our design review to our historic district. I'm know? imagining before we even get there that we start bringing in the committee's feedback, right? And I guess we could incorporate them this along the same way. So. Yeah, or well, well, we'll have like the, the town-wide, I think, survey tool that we can see if there are any like patterns that emerge there. Um, we could, if we have our stuff done amount of it done first we can have it as a base layer that people could also potentially either you know vote up or down or something along those lines so that they're not just adding to things that are obvious um, and then the the other part that maybe um, open that from here. I'm not going to go into Leslie's email. So, um, but is based the spreadsheet um, or the tables that uh, I worked with Barb on to give the committee's guidance on um, how they could submit what their goals are um, and their strategies that would relate to those. So. To have, to have them list goals that you can measure that someone can say, yes, we met that, or no, we didn't. Um, and then, you know, how, how do we measure that? Um, and then list out whatever related strategies are. And that's, that's a little bit of the piece that I've been trying to work on in between meetings, is to try to go and start to pull some language together so that way the committees, when they start to meet to talk about this, they're not starting with with nothing. You know, what do we already have in our plans that talks about, you know, what are our aspirations, what are our goals, and then say that these are just places to start the conversation and maybe they're pretty close to what everybody thinks, maybe they're not, but at least it's a place for people to start thinking and it helps to, when you see it written out, to go and see how you would do something similar to that. So do you want to we want to practice doing some more. I mean, I think it helps me to do it a few times so mm -hmm. we can determine what's what falls into which basket. We've got the, we did a few transform, evolve. I mean, I think we want to increase house, affordable housing. I don't know how we would signify that on the map. 
maybe there are certain spots where we, we want to encourage it. Yeah, and it doesn't need to be it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, yeah, so that may be one that would just go into the questions and comments. That may be a uh, right the affordable housing may be something that just doesn't fit on a point. <coughs> Yeah. If, if we knew there was one, if we knew well, some Saban's general, pasture is a great place for this and I mean can you make well, like we broad area <laughs> 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 or do you just do points? I guess you just do points. It, you can you can draw and make broad area. Um, you can draw lines. You have to click the pencil, there we go. Uh. <laughs> um but in general, I think we want to increase housing opportunities in and around our, um, within walking distance of our, our downtown. to revisit what we think the radius is for that. Because I know we've had discussions in here before and I remember debating, like, mile and a half, two miles, like, what's actually walkable? Do you factor in hills? Yeah. <laughs> and close to the schools, too, because, like, the whole Bailey Avenue place, people have to, like, walk a whole mile to get to the middle school. And that, yeah. can, that yeah. can make people late to school. Hmm. <laughs> it also builds character. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in winter. You can tell Aaron grew up in Nebraska. <laughs> it's nice that they're that they are that that's considered walkable though, that they're that they are actually walking from that. Yeah. Lots of people like their parents work in the town, so they have to leave early stuff. So. Mm. Sometimes they have to walk. We tend to focus in and around the downtown, but we should also. I mean, just as an example of a maintain, you could, uh, we might get comments from a place like College Street or up by VCFA to maintain the historic character of this, you know, residential neighborhood. You know, maybe it's College Street past, you know, we'll, we might get comments about maintaining the character of a neighborhood, whether it's historic or not historic. Town, yeah, town, town Hill may say we want to maintain the... we got to define character. Yeah, I think we avoid ever putting the word character in there yeah. again, because it's, it it's, it's meaningless. I, I mean, There's got to be something about it. I think right? you're right, we're going to get that comment, but I don't know that we need to put it in right now, because I... Or, I or we like should the encourage them to articulate what about what that we're measuring is yeah. that, that they like and value. I think what people do though is then they fall back on density and things and then that, that's what I'm scared of. I'm scared of people focusing on, on things that aren't really preserving the character but, but they're measurable things that people can get behind. You're going to talk about historic facades or... Yeah, there's... Yeah, density is just a measure of housing units. You can't like see that. But we see it over and over. Like, like so yeah, how, how, do we, how do we talk about character and leave room for building out housing and all the other goals we have. Well, let's identify what about that character makes it that, that we value. Is yeah. it like architectural detailing? Is it, you know, scale and massing? And if so, like, what about it? Those are all like tangible things that That's you can- That's my property value. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's also something we could look at, and um, I should add probably a layer, right? I've got a 3D rendering of pro property value per acre. Like, we probably want to increase the value of uh, our properties in Montpelier if we want these levels of services. So what kinds of development, what does that look like? Um, there are clear patterns, you know? The stuff we built, um, ironically, the stuff we built after zoning is worth a lot less than per, on a per acre basis than what we built before zoning. 
So we need, you know. Just zoning in general, not our recent zoning changes. No, no, no. no. <laughs> right, right, right. Zoning, zoning, <laughs> in <laughs> zoning in Montpelier. Zoning in Montpelier. This planning commission ruined. <laughs> I'd like to submit my letter of invitation. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that's a great point, though, about defining character. Oh, yeah, uh, it's really it's hard. one of the biggest challenges. But we, but we don't have to define it. We can focus on actual things. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It'll be each person, so what does that mean? Right. So, retain the historic nature of Cliff Street neighborhood. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> not going to put that one in there. <laughs> um, we can put, what do we do over here? Now, there's been some talk about Nikki leaving, right? Yes. Is that something we want to, you know, signal that we would like to keep them here? <laughs> I don't know if we can do it through this, but we could at least say, you know, yeah, maintain I mean, presence of schools, mm -hmm. you know, beyond, beyond the public school system, having higher education available mm -hmm. is important. Yeah, I mean, I think those would both fall into our education plan, which we're required to have, and our economic development plan, which we're required to have, both of which are going to touch on those, maintaining those maintaining. opportunities. That's good, because I don't think we had any input on that during our all-committee kickoff meeting. I don't think anybody's goals were right. to maintain higher education institutions. Vocational. Perfect. You know, one question we had during the, the zoning is for a number of these areas, what is the Can we? right, what is the vision? <laughs> that's the that's like south of Berlin. Basically behind my house. Like in my behind le park behind <laughs> Leslie's yeah. house. <laughs> yes, that's what I want. She's going to donate her backyard, in fact. Actually, we have, we, have, we have a network of, of trails back there that um, are privately owned. But, yeah, somewhere in that realm there or on Berlin Street or, it's, it's certainly in the council's goals. Has just, been to study that, so that could be a question or comment. You know, do we want to have access to? Because the closest playground to me is hmm. elementary school, I think. Which you know, uh, we can manage, the only if one not that count. far. <laughs> Park slash playground in District Three. That's what I would write. Yeah. That be a transformer and evolve. That's a good question. There's, there, there's not much there to involve to evolve, right? Yeah. It's just woods. There's like a farm somewhere in that area. Sugaring farm. Yeah. We own fifty acres behind the little farm field street and that's like right outside. Oh, so we have right. a donor for the park. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah, we're probably still Start adding candidates, but I think if we understand like these points are not intended to be exact, or someone sees like a park on oh, my yeah. property, <laughs> I think I think an evolve that's along the same lines as one we just did that's more of an evolve than a transform is to evolve the winter recreational environment in Montpelier. I feel like we don't the things don't have to be so dead in winter, and I think this goes into economic development, some other things. 
climbing gym, greenhouse. There's like attractions that could be like winter, give you something to do in the winter. Like, are there any, what's the status of this top dump? What do you mean by status? <laughs> Still a dump. Mm -hmm. Still active. What, what is, is it, it open? <laughs> no. <I> mean, <laughs> Who controls it? Can we do anything with it? Uh, it is, is, it is, is it public worth, works. Is it worth considering? I mean. It is public works and is primarily used, it is used as a stump dump still. It is the old city landfill, so yeah. it is a, has a classification in there for that. Yeah. But it's used for the stump and it's also used for, for s snow dump as well. Yeah. It is one of our last ones we have left. <laughs> I thought that's what we used my street for. <laughs> oh, dumping snow. <laughs> Let's just plow it there and leave it. Because that's what's been happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's not, there's not enough space to deal with all the snow. Yeah, we keep... The unfortunate part is we've lost a number of our snow dumps um, with changing rules. So we used to use a lot of our floodplains for snow storage, and we can't use our floodplains for snow storage anymore. Dump so. snow into a new ski. Happens a lot. So. It, it happens a lot. Still, a even though it's from against Kirby's yeah. deck, not even just your window yeah. of all of the various can, private. You can look down used the river. To be, used to be floodplains, though. They used to go under the. There used to be a large snow dump under the I-89, so they used to just go down there, park it on, dump yeah. it on the land, and let it melt there. But um, we can't use that one anymore. Yeah. My first floor of my house is very thankful that that doesn't happen anymore because it's not as at much risk of being underwater. Ooh. Going up this way. All the way up to Wrightsville. How about we maintain protection of the uh, flood floodplain? Yeah, river, 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 river corridor. corridor. Thanks, Mike. Was there one about the stump dump that you wanted to add? No, it's just curious. I don't know what. If there was an opportunity yeah. there that was it's not that, being. Sounds like there's no opportunity. There are some <laughs> trails that you can. Definitely. Yep, there is. Yeah. Uh, the trails do come in and go around it on the hillside. Yeah. The south side of it. Good to see Google Maps finally updated the Stump Dump Road to Finch Road. <laughs> was it called Stump Dump Road? It was, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Because there were no other houses on it, so it used to be just called Dump Road, <laughs> and then we changed it to Stump Dump Road. And then once a residential development appeared on the north side of the road, they requested that their mailing address not be Stump Dump Road. So. <laughs> Like at the at the least, we could come up with multiple uses out there. Like, have there not been rather than just one? Yeah, we in, we studied it like for the solar. The solar. We we studied it for solar, and it didn't work for solar. Why well, not? Just the way that the like, the, the way the landscaping the the hill kind of goes up, yeah. and so that's why we ended up with the city solar farm is at Log Road instead, which is just a little bit farther north. What's going on with? Um, Redstone. Redstone. Uh, there was uh, an auction, so that is a state-owned, was a state-owned, still Bennett. is a state-owned, yes. Alan mm -hmm. Goldman won the bid, but they, I think it's been a little bit of time, but he hasn't yet closed on purchasing it from the state. He's won the bid, but hasn't closed on it, so we don't know what's going to happen with it until that step happened. Is there some crazy plan to connect to the long trail from there, or am I thinking of something else? Yeah, that was in the newspaper. Okay. What, what? I think he, yeah. he said that. He yeah, owns a number of, uh, owns a lot of land, hundreds and hundreds of acres. Um, and so his land goes from there. He owns the land that's all the trees 
to the west. And a lot of that extends out towards the Worcester Range, um, where he thought if there was an organization that could help connect some other parcels that you might be able to connect to Worcester, where we could connect up with the Long Trail. And Oops. I botched it. You got, yeah, really you can, not, you not to, used to your using your, uh, your computer. Here. As far as big housing transformations, though, yeah, that right there. That would be great that's for That's walking to downtown, closer, closer than Bailey, right? Yeah. Um, be good for uh, high school students. Yeah. service community and what resources are important or what they might need. I don't know where we would find What that. are some examples of human services? Well, like, I don't know if I'm thinking of separate <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking my husband is on the board of a drop-in center for psychiatric survivors, like, so I'm just thinking... I'm going to remote. Yeah, I mean, just for the, you know, because I, I don't know, sometimes talking about all the smart growth and stuff is great and the energy stuff, but I feel like we're talking to a certain mm -hmm. group of people in Montpelier and I just am wondering about other people who live in Montpelier and what their needs are. Yeah, the, so community services, we will have a chapter and I think we have to have a chapter on, on services. And so community services will be one of those chapters. Um, so we have a senior center, we have uh, our recreation not just recreation facilities, which might be on a facilities plan, but we also have services that go along with that, daycare, after school programs. Um, so as, as planners, we kind of have these three bubbles that overlap in a lot of ways. So the stuff we always focus in on are those, those built natural resource pieces. You know, a lot of what we've talked about here streets and sewers and all these other things and then you've got this second bubble which is economic development um, and then there's the third bubble which is people and that actually ironically ends up being the one that we forget about the most are those social um, social capital and um, it's more difficult to to plan for them but at the same time those are just as valid planning yeah. planning topics mm -hmm. in and well, it's good there's talk about for it yeah, we, you know, um, equity and those types of issues, um, social equity, racial equity, so has a place. Put in a point somewhere downtown, just anywhere downtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I think maybe coming up with some organizations to reach out to yeah. to get ideas from. Yeah. I think Down Street's one. Yeah. Um, yeah. In each each chapter, again, we talk about uh, we talk about education. We have um, adult basic education services. So even when within our education chapter, we might talk about the school facilities and how much they could support and how much capacity they have. We can really talk about it in a bricks and mortar, nuts and bolts kind of way. But we can also talk about its link to economics and how, you know, are we doing a good job of preparing kids for future economic opportunities? And we can also talk about this, the social, you know, human interaction and those services that are available to people that aren't physical. You know, they're about job training and retraining. Mm -hmm. So like identify human service related needs and priorities. So I'd always encourage when when those types of things come up because that's always going to be the thing that you know certainly I'll call that my fault. Um, my weakness is the, the human services and the social services and remembering to 
include that component. So if you if you think we're missing something, it probably means we are, and we should um, be well, thinking one, about. One things. thing I'm aware of that, that the entire state needs is recovery beds. So for drug addiction, there's the state's done a lot in the last few years to help with treatment, and. Uh, you can get at least some treatment in Vermont relatively easy compared to how it used to be now. But then recovery after treatment, there's almost nothing. And almost everything that does exist is in Burlington. So um, that was one thing I was going to bring up was it fits into housing, it also fits into the services. This chapter that, we, that we're talking about fits into both, but it, yeah, having more of that. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of work that was done in the housing committees about homelessness. And past couple of years and that's one that you know we talk a lot about housing but we don't talk about what are the services that are needed um, to support that transition from homelessness back to housing It's been silent the past um, year, at least on my front, downstairs. So, um, you know, certainly when the zoning was going through, there was a lot of discussions about the potential and possibilities. But ultimately, at the end, um, we haven't heard much. But that's not to say that there isn't something somewhere percolating, but nothing that has made its way to, to my office downstairs. Does the same family still own it? The yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Zorzi, Aja, family. Um, although the parcel, if you look to the left of the screen, west, um, there is, that part of that is owned by the college. So there's that, you see that one field, that's owned by the college. So there's this, there has been discussion of a potential project uh, of a cottage cluster senior housing facility to go in there. But I didn't put slopes on here but that's also yeah <laughs> the slopes plays a big part of all these discussions for for those but it's a good you got some good data layers in there some of those I don't have Uh, last year. <laughs> we, uh, these are our orthos. We struggles to get. <laughs> you can see a bit of snow still. Oh, yeah. Parts. But the leaves were ready to pop. Did we remove the museum? Yeah, we did. <laughs> I deleted that. Good thought it would get lost. Yeah. <laughs> Before that goes public. Get rid of it. <laughs> get rid of it. I'll get a call from Eric Gilbertson in the morning. <laughs> There, yeah, there, there's been a proposal because there, there is an application. Is there an application? Well, certainly it's not a secret that um, there has been a, the the old gas station that was at the corner was purchased and demolished, mm -hmm. and it's a proposal. There will be a proposal to redevelop at that site. Um, there was a discussion about potentially trying to move Faux Capital back up to the street, but that, as far as I know, has not materialized. So I think they're still moving forward with their plan to build a new structure there. It's safe to say that for this ocean of parking here, that we want to work towards a maybe better use of it over time. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about that greenhouse Kirby was talking about? 
indoor water park. <laughs> People would come. If you build it, they will come. Five story <laughs> skateboard park. Oh, a pool would be great. Just a, just a small lap pool, 25 meters. Yeah. Great. Just think of a greenhouse where you could like go and walk around somewhere where it's actually like warm activity. That's warm. Who owns all that lot space back there? Hmm? Is that part of the capital complex? Like this? It's, it's not in the capital complex, but the state owns the parking lot to the left, left right pit. there. That's yeah. owned by, and then the other yeah, gray cool. parking is owned by the insurance company. And then, this and is then the it goes to the federal. Space. And courthouse parking. So yeah. we we heard some proposals to put a garage in behind 133 State, behind the Department of Taxes there, and that seemed like something that yep is appealing. Put in what? To to put a garage in there. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. That, that as opposed to the pit, which is much yeah. more complicated with multiple right. landowners. This one's just the state. The, you have and the yeah, state wanted great. their own parking. They probably would be opting for one over here. Because I think that the parking lot near where the Girton Pumpkin Park is in the river, we should try to move away from that one mm -hmm. to the right. Yeah, yeah the transform right the there, transform green into green space or, I don't know, river oriented. Or any type and of redevelopment, even if it was residential yeah. or. Yeah. We have this engaged the, the river there. I don't think that people yeah. want to live that close to a highway. Mm. Just residential. Yeah. But well, we're going to have... I'm surprised, though. <laughs> sure. It would have to be like a mid-rise sort of thing, like the, <coughs> uh, like the Taylor lot. Yeah. Maybe and I think see. this goes to the... the most of the projects that we saw for Net Zero Montpelier competition, there were a lot of ideas in there that we could certainly kind of throw throw into that site. Hey, what about this gateway? You tried to raise this earlier. Yeah, well, I've got the question over here about what our vision is for really this entire area to the east and the south. Um, and then, you know, that neighborhood. The, the neighborhoods up here, you know, what... What, if anything, are their needs and what have they articulated? What's happening in that space where the restaurant There's, was? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing yet. Nothing. It's clean. But well, I think we need some sort of connector, pedestrian connector up there. I mean, people can walk up and down Northfield Street, but it's pretty busy. And right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the sidewalk ends, right, like around that car wash. Yeah. Oh, does it? Even after the... It does. May, even after the project was... Um, Northfield Street project was done. Yeah, it doesn't go north. Though, oh. Or south, yeah. rather. Just going to put... I'll have to see the gap analysis, see if that's another one that we flagged. Yeah. But I know one of the, the goals that we had before when we did the zoning was that we wanted... We may not get mixed-use neighborhoods. People like their residential neighborhoods, but we did want them to be walkable to an area where they might have some... Yeah. And this is an area that really, other than the hotel, and the Grange, <laughs> doesn't have that many opportunities for. You live in this district too? Uh, no, I live. Sorry. I live on Liberty Street. Oh, okay. But my parents own apartment buildings up there. Oh, okay. And a couple of my friends live there. Okay. Yeah, I'm the only one on this commission who lives in that part of town. <laughs> Everyone else lives in districts one and two. Um, I'm the sole voice for District 3 here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that I did the whole commission thinks comprehensively about the city. I'm not the 
<laughs> but yeah, and but I just want to the, park in my backyard. <laughs> sort of that, um, John, since you were in that neighborhood, there's that um, residential neighborhood kind of, oh, you're, you're, you're classifying everything behind National Life and over there as part of one, I see. Yeah, okay. And I put improved neighborhood connectivity. And, yeah. Uh, Do you want to put something near the Econo Lodge, like encourage development of restaurant or bar? That would be pretty sweet. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> big something fan of <laughs> a nice, a nice British pub or something. That would be great. Yeah. With some trivia and a different right. does, does, the city, does the city own that parcel though? No, we don't. It's still owned by the Econo Lodge <laughs> folks. Oh. Fish and chips. A pub would do well in my opinion. Note to people watching the TV. <laughs> but I'm sure when we talk to our um, to Laura and the folks who are doing economic development, they would certainly be looking for sites that are available for redevelopment. And that might be one of them. At the same time, transportation may come in and say that's a great place for our park and ride lot to the downtown. So we'll probably get a couple of different ideas from folks that we would have to weigh in the end. What are you thinking over there? Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know what, uh, what National Life is up to. It does feel like it's an underused or a area with more potential. have sort of these incredible views and in land here that gets used once a year. <laughs> mm -hmm. We've had the proposal for the gondola up to National Life to get people up there and then the proposal to have residential development up there so that way it becomes more of a village. It would have the residential yeah. and, and these other opportunities. It's all owned by National Life so it's something they would have to either partner on or support. But they seem to be very engaged in the community they support. I mean, basically their name is on every um, event, event I've seen. Yeah. You know, every single uh, playbill and poster. So. Run out of ideas, John. We're done. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> um, we, uh, vision of the future. Would it help to delegate some things for each of us to kind of interest that we're, we have to come back with some ideas for? Is that something people are interested in? Like, like looking at human um, yeah. services, organizations to reach out to? I'm not going to do that, or maybe I'm too tied into that world already. <laughs> too close to it. But I'm happy to do that. May as well leverage, yes. yeah. Leverage that. Is there anything else we need to mm -hmm. feel like we need to come back and. We can probably get a. Well, maybe this goes within the same template of the other sort of goals, but a, a non map based uh, list of what our vision and maybe strategies are. So yeah, you can I mean, add maybe that to the page. In our Google Drive, we have the notes from the, the top priorities from various committees. Maybe we could all just review that and plug in some of the ideas that we thought are a good idea. And maybe a specific homework item for you, Emory, is to think about any kind of complaints or ideas that you've heard from people your age who don't drive. I hear like a lot, like everybody who lives like past Northfield Street, like about how dark and shady it is, kind of like on the walk, and oh. like there's no sidewalks, really, and just it's so kind of dangerous. Maybe more lights. 
But there's still people making that walk, even with that. Yeah, like some of my friends, when their parents can't pick them up, they have to walk from the middle school all the way up to that little, like, loop near the number eight. Yeah. Is that where the, is there a bus, or is that? No, there's no buses for the middle school. Oh, okay. Oh. But what's at the number eight? Is that just where they live, or are they? Uh, just, yeah, it's just kind of the colonial drive. Oh, okay. So they live in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they have to walk home, and it's kind of sketchy at night. I usually yeah. walk down here, but now that they've had some logging. Yeah. Um, I've occasionally gone down this way, and it's just not fun. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's better than it used to be with the project. The recent project, I mean, I used to, I run up and down it sometimes, runs from and to work, and it has improved, but it's just a very narrow area. I don't know that there's a lot we can do for expanding it to make it safer, but maybe more lighting. Yeah. Well, that's helpful, I guess you can work some <laughs> <laughs> Are there other uh, map layers to be... Any ideas of things that people would like to see? Well, if you heard slopes. Mm -hmm. Put the slopes up. I mean, property values, you can do that, or? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be interesting. The values would be based on the city's appraisal, I take it? Yes. Yeah. We could adjust it with the CLA, but we could just leave it doesn't, as our yeah, it doesn't change much between when you're comparing across right you I would raise just, everybody's I would just CLA. That it's not necessarily yeah. reflective of market value right so. with CLA a uh, common level of appraisal so it's just a factor that they the tax department calculates and will multiply for the purposes of the equalization payments for schools hmm. it just it's to make up if you're trying to compare Montpelier to other towns but we're not really doing that so But it is always a good, interesting model to take a look at when you're looking at various projects because you think, you know, oh, one tractor supply that must be worth this much. And then you start realizing how much, like, if that were five houses, five houses would have generated more taxes than one tractor supply just because the way of. Right. You look at, like, China Star and, and the tattoo place, you know not what most people would think of as high rent places, but this one parcel generates a lot of tax revenue per acre because it's used so efficiently. It has something like, I don't know, 20 apartments and three businesses in it. Um, so if you take that and you multiply that over a block, um, you know, that's a tremendous amount of value compared to a number of other maybe less efficiently used places around town, around neighboring towns. I have a question. Has there been, have there ever been any discussion about Stonecutter's Way? It seems just kind of random that we've got a street just kind of nestled in there, but... <laughs> I'm sure that Tom McArdle could give a nice broad history of that um, because it was state rail yard, and I don't know if it's still owned by the state and we lease it, or if it has actually been transferred to the city. I think that would be a nice pedestrian path. I've also heard in you know, a one-way street in McBerry, one-way street in the opposite oh. direction. Um, especially in the winter, that sounds yeah. like a great idea, because Barry is absolutely horrifying. Yeah. They, both, they both are right they now. Are. I mean, it's just been a really terrible year for that. I read it in the bridge. <laughs> no, you can tell. If you drive around town, you can tell. <laughs> the puddles in my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. All everywhere. I don't know if this is a point for the map, but I think it's something that we have to think about as we have these downtown discussions, and that's uh, the existence of the brownfields and contam there's contaminated sites, so we should all be aware of that. Yeah, uh, there's a layer we want. Yeah, I don't know. But it's something that's going to definitely affect 
what actually gets built or what happens because it, it puts limitations on especially the cost of putting something in at each of these sites. And my understanding is pretty much all along the river there because there used to be industrial stuff pretty heavy yep. and popular at one point before there was a lot of regulation. Economic development opportunities in this area too. Down oh yeah. Um, yeah, down in the down, yeah, Montpelier the Granite Works and those other buildings in there, I think, have been proposed for and now redevelopment. Is trying to trying to get out of that. What'd you say? Kizzy, almost. Yeah. What was the butcher shop? How do uh, we bring the butcher, butcher shop back? Can we just yeah, put that on here? Yeah. <laughs> I would take that. That was my neighborhood bar for a while, too. Hmm. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of, there's opportunity in that area that enough people live there, there could be more. Yeah. And with the new bike path, we're going to have more accessibility. And now Caledonia Spirit's further down, there's like, there's, there's opportunity. We do need a bunch of The Perry Street Stumble. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So the gateway near there, we had we brought that up. <laughs> it, it's kind of related to this area of the city, and the, it seems like you can commute by foot between the two of those. That, are we thinking like industrial for the gateway? Because that's like seems like the only place that we have in this for this area. Yeah. Down by the roundabout. What is the Cross yeah. Vermont Trail? Aren't they doing something with the bridge over there? Or? It's being built right where you see the words Vermont Patient Alliance. It's going along that oh, old yeah. country club road, yeah. and then it goes down and it's coming back out okay. over by Agway. And yeah, one of, one of the tough questions that a lot of communities struggle to address and, and deal with is when it comes to characterizing the purpose of various roads and streets is um, we have streets that are places for people you know, where we have businesses and homes and the people should take uh, kind of priority in terms of the design and the function so it's okay that cars are slow there and we have other um, road infrastructure that are designed or should be designed to move large um, volumes of vehicles. So, you know, obvious one is Interstate 89. So, um, it's best to pick one and go for move forward with that. And oftentimes people try to split the difference and they think they could make both. So then you have all of these trip generating uses with curb cuts on roads that are intended or originally were intended to move um, lots of cars that then become congested and are terrible places for people to walk on and they now no longer serve any function in terms of they're not great at moving cars, they're not are great places for people, they end up being very expensive in terms of infrastructure and very um, low in terms of yielding um, tax values, so they become a net loss. You know, they, they increase our taxes because they aren't paying for the infrastructure that they're using. So identifying you know, what are our areas that'll be, that we are gonna consider streets and invest in for things like sidewalks and other areas where really they should be limited in terms of uses that generate uh, trips and you know, are not going to be places where we wanna encourage uh, high levels of activity. Um, and oftentimes things like industrial uses could be put good potential uses there where they require maybe more space. They don't generate as much traffic or the traffic that they generate is maybe more truck oriented and you don't want um, on your streets. So that's, you know, a discussion we can have around some of these spaces over here. Um, I don't know. It's not, it's... It's not something we've we've talked about much. And it seems like our options are actually quite limited. It seems like Route 2 is... In 302, yeah. Is, is about it as far as having those options, right? For us to 
traffic moving type options. Yeah, and where does it where does it start and end and yeah. And we had a lot of discussion with that in our complete streets plan, the street typology. So as we get into talking about the transportation plan, that's what we would probably be talking about those exact things that they had to address when they were looking at that, which is, you know, what is what would be our perfect River Street and Berlin Street, you know, if we were to lay it out, we would have, you know, X for vehicle traffic and we need pedestrians. To, if we're doing complete streets, we have to address how the pedestrians move through here, how do bikes move through here, and how do cars move through here. And we have to make sure we've accommodate, accommodated all of them. And in some cases, um, with Northfield Street, we have failed to provide for all of our um, users. We aren't addressing how pedestrians move through this space. So that would be flagged in our transportation plan as a deficiency that they may take, you know, some of these may take, you know, decades. You know, we're missing sidewalks on East State, but that's because it would cost three quarters of a million dollars to build the retaining wall to keep that sidewalk going on East State just because there's just a cliff there. So some things just take time and lots of money to fix, but it's it's still there as a need. Um, it just may be more difficult to fix. Get rid of cliff. Just keep filling it. Yeah, yeah there's a sidewalk gap on a little bit farther up, I think. Yeah, that's where it crosses it over. Crosses, right? See, that's where it crosses, and there should be. Um, you know, it's a pretty busy area. That that road has enough pedestrian traffic that it should have sidewalks on both sides. Mm -hmm. But it has a gap. Should we shut this down? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like we should take this back up after a public hearing so we have a public hearing in our next meeting and then come back to this. Well, I think it's the idea that we're all adding things in between so we all take a look so how a did, little bit more and add. Yeah, how, can you go through how you got here again? So if you go to, uh, if you go to montp.city or plan.montp.city, it'll take you to the same place. Uh, if it, and you go all the way to the bottom of this page. Oh yeah. There's the links to the two maps here. And these are open just to planning commissioners at this point, or is it open to the public? Anyone can can, can view see them, it, but they won't be able to. But add. they write, and if you log in with your Gmail addresses, which all of you have, um, then you can edit in. Uh, edit the map. And if you can't edit, send John an send email. Send me a note. You can also edit he this can make website. Sure he... Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. So should we, should we just have a place on the agenda then to revisit like every time just to see if anyone's added anything so they can go over it with the group and in that way track yeah, like, let's do that for what now. we do in between meetings? didn't add anything at all. Come prepared with something to add on that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, read a plan, come up with something. Isn't there like a broad timeline for this for the city plan? My you know, lights back on. Yeah. Uh, my hope has been that um, it it's twelve chapters at a minimum, so that's gonna take time to work its way through. So I've kind of said if we were done by the end of, and I mean like done with the whole plan and ready to go to public hearing by the end of 2020, I'd be happy, or even if it was adopted, I would be shocked just because it takes, yeah. once we've come up with stuff and once we've gone to the committees, you know, if we're going to be inclusive, it takes time. If we want to write our own plan and just right. roll it out, then we'll get crushed, but we can get it done faster. <laughs> so we really want to come up with proposals, work with the committees, work with the public, um, and uh, 
and then I think we'll we'll end up with a very really strong plan within that time frame. We could also here was if you go the energy part here, it takes you to this folder in Google Drive, which has the um, tables and you know spread. Not everyone loves spreadsheets, so there are other ways to kind of make this more accessible, but this has the, the idea of the vision, um, the goals with you know, target date, uh, data source, and priority ranking, um, and then strategies. I have it so that committees, if they wanted, if we wanted to set these up for committees, can basically select when they think it's ready to go to the PC, and they can have it all come together in one one place. And, and a lot of this is some of the stuff I'm going to be trying to kind of get prepared to help set the table for them, because it is a little bit complicated, and we had some models on how to have the conversation so it was consistent in how they all connected together between your aspirations or your visions, and then your goals and your strategies. I need to leave a little early. I just made a couple of notes on these minutes. There's a couple typos and a vote it needs to be changed. Oh. Your computer back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't shut it off. It's okay. You you probably want this stuff. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your work, John. Yeah, you did it a long time ago. <laughs> Except for that other map, which I did moments before. <laughs> it was still great. It was. Anything else about the city plan? I think we move on to the minutes. And I moved to approve the minutes. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I have some edits. Oh, I think Leslie has some it. edits. John, John has made the motion. Do we have a second? Just so uh, we can start discussion? We can second. All right. Aaron's got the second. I accept Leslie's edits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, under, um, on the first page, under the final punch list item for zoning fixes, the last um, paragraph in the second sentence, it's a small typo, but it says the administrative officer should have a way of settlements or coming into compliance, uh, or of coming into compliance, it should be for coming into compliance, I believe. Just to be clear. All right. The section was too restricted to allow that. Okay, that's the first edit. Second edit on the second page under the motion to warn a hearing on bracket date, blah, blah, blah. Um, the second sentence says the best way to process with the city plan, so I think that should be proceed instead of process. Oh, so, proceed. Just yeah. Forget. I had planning commission. She was not. <laughs> oh, okay. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I am. I five ceiling. And then um, the final edit is right above the adjournment. Um, the last sentence before adjournment is um, the motion passed on a three to zero vote with those who had been in attendance at that meeting. I am fairly certain that I also joined that vote, so it was a four zero because I knew we needed four we needed for a motion four. to carry. Right. So that would be my final correction. Thank you. Yeah. I can handle this. Hi. You, you got him. Okay. Is everyone okay with the changes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So should we vote on approving the minutes with Leslie's changes? Assuming John yes. adopts them in his motion. <laughs> <laughs> 
So. Yeah, I pre accepted the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I pre the pre and post accepted, we'll take it. Uh, okay, so with Leslie's changes, friendly amendment, blah, 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 rules, of, rules and stuff. Uh, do we have a vote? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? Okay. Gotta love when the lawyers get to uh, blah, blah, blah rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> the minutes are approved, and that leaves us with number seven. I move we adjourn. Wait a second. Okay. It's not, not debatable. Yeah. Uh, and we are adjourned. Okay.